Hey everybody, I'm gonna go over a very simple rule when it comes to EMPs and protecting your electronics. And by the way, I know your first thing you're thinking of is a Faraday cage. It's not the Faraday cage, although that's an amazing tool. There's other things you can do and understand to know if your electronics are safe during an EMP. Stay through the video. First, an EMP, which simply stands for an electromagnetic pulse, is a subsequent occurrence that comes from the detonation of a nuclear weapon also. A coronal mass injection from the sun can cause the same type of effect. It's not an EMP. But either way, in both those situations, the energy forces ions, which are simply just charged particles and electrons too, mind you, to basically become widespread and flow into anything metal, mind you. It's called electricity. So if you have like a long tower and you put tons of ions in that tower, that tower will now conduct electricity with what we call a high current. And if the current's high enough, that can be catastrophic. Well, now picture an EMP event, and now we have electric wires all across the country. We're talking about thousands of miles of this. It drastically increases the amount of ions it catches, and it sends this incredibly high current down the power lines to your home. Well, obviously that can be really a problem because if anything's plugged in the wall at that point, so I just have my television plugged in the wall, that current will go right through your breaker panel, by the way, and will not trip the breakers, and will go right into your television and fry your television. When we saw a event occur in the 1800s, there were telegraph lines. That's almost the only power lines there were. The current that went down the power lines caused lightning, you know, arcs of electricity going from the lines to the telegraph shacks, et cetera, causing massive fires everywhere. And that was like barely having any type of anything at that point compared to today. Today, we're all wired in, and that's something we seriously have to uh, take into account. So anything at your house, by the way, plugged in the wall is going to fry. Keep, it, keep that in mind if that happens. Now, what about items that are not plugged in the wall? Like right here, I always talk about my good old Geiger counter. It was just sitting on my desk. This little guy has microchips in there, and if it's just sitting on a table, not plugged in, well, how many ions can this little device catch? I mean, because if we're talking about power lines going all the way across the globe, all across the country at least, and ions hitting it and causing massive electrical currents to you know, pulse through, how much for this? Not very much, right? So if this is sitting by itself on a table, not plugged in the wall, there's actually an excellent chance this guy will survive. Neat. Or any electronic device you have sitting by itself. Now, we do have to worry about this because let's say this is actually sitting near an electrical outlet Remember I talked about how at the, uh, the telegraph offices and such had arcs of lightning going across, arcs of electricity? That could happen too. In fact, it probably will. In other words, if you have some devices that are sitting near your electrical outlets, they absolutely can arc across and still zap your device like this or your cell phone, whatever the case may be. Will it? It's a roll of the dice. How far away is it from the outlets? Is the device itself going to get enough ions to cause it to fry? There's no specific rule on that, at least that I've read anyway, and I've read a lot about all, how all this works. So keeping items that are important, like my Geiger counter, you know what? There's something about EMPs and nuclear detonations going hand in hand. I keep these in a Faraday cage. That's a totally different video, by the way, on how to make your Faraday cage. I'll link it at the end. Just to be on the safe side, because I'll say it again, if I just left this out on the table and the EMP happened, there is a chance this will still work. But you know what? If there's a nuclear detonation, I don't want to risk the life of my family on a chance. So I'm going to put this in a Faraday cage and anything else, mind you, that actually I would deem to be essential after a post-apocalyptic nuclear war or whatever the case may be. Okay, so let's take it to the next level. And here's something people don't understand. Let's talk about cars. People think in their mind that if the car is like older than a certain date, Whatever date they put, it's like the 80s, I think, you know, or maybe you have a car from the 70s or earlier. Oh, that's the only cars that are going to run after an EMP. And that's simply not true at all. Uh, people will tell you, by the way, because they don't know what they're talking about, that we have no way of generating an EMP outside of a nuclear weapon. So they'll tell you, oh, it's all speculation anyway. That's not true at all. We, through science research, can make EMPs now all we want to. In fact, in our government, we actually have missiles that can release EMPs in a very strategic directions to knock out power for a specific pinpoint building if we want to. So we can test these things now. And what they found when it comes to automobiles, cars, even modern day up the brand new car you have, if you're driving it down the road and an EMP hits, the car's going to stall out. 
And at that point, wait a second and try to restart it. 95% of the cars will restart again. That's cool. Now, since the cars riddled with microchips, I mean, 5% of them, the microchip that actually causes like maybe the fuel, inject fuel injectors to work will fry and the car won't start. But the other 95%, you'll probably have some random microchips that are fried inside of there because the car is a pretty big area to absorb a lot of those electrons, therefore causing the current to flow through it. And so maybe your radio won't work or perhaps your blinkers won't work or something like that, but the car will still run. 95% of them will still run, even, mo even modern day cars, which is a really nice thing. Now, that's if your car is driving down the road. If your car is just sitting at home, it's that gamble again. How close is it to your power lines? How close is it to maybe an electrical box? Maybe you have an electric car that's plugged in and charging. And by the way, if that happens, kiss that Tesla goodbye. It's gone because literally this arc of current will travel down that cord right into your car and fry it for good. But your car in the driveway may or may not actually get fried. It's kind of hard to say. But driving down the road, you're not usually any power lines and they'll usually keep going. All right. With that in mind, I want you to understand there's companies that sell EMP protectors for your house and for your car. And they've been tested and they do work, by the way. Uh, I don't have one in my house. I simply don't have room in my breaker panel. And again, since most cars will still run anyway, I'm rolling the dice myself and saying, you know, I think it's going to be just fine. All right. So ultimately, it comes down to this. Anything with a microchip is vulnerable. Anything seriously important like your Geiger counter, put it in your Faraday cage, which I'll link in a minute. Your car will probably keep running. So one of the biggest fears we have is an EMP attack. And that obviously is a real possibility. But... Don't get all worked up about it. Prepare, make a Faraday cage, put your stuff in the Faraday cage and keep it there. And so that way, when that day comes, oh my gosh, if that day comes, you'll be ready. Thanks for watching.